One of the great things about my job is I get to talk to people like you all the time who are already incredibly passionate to begin with. About two years ago, I'm in Milwaukee talking to the top beer makers of the world, a passionate, if not totally sober group. <laughs> and at the end of their meetings, at the end of the day, they went into the tavern at the hotel to relax. And all the big names were there. And Augie Bush said to the bartender, I'll have a Bud Light. Hardly surprising. And Mr. Miller said, well, then make mine a Miller Light. And Mr. Coors said, Coors Light for me. And so it went until it got to Arthur Guinness. And he said to the bartender, I believe I'll have a Diet Coke. And Augie Bush said, but Arthur, aren't you going to have a Guinness? He said, no. If the rest of you aren't drinking beer, then neither am I. <laughs> I talk about attitude. If I'm odd, does that make us even? Well, yes. Each of us is odd, unique, a once in a universe happening. But when you look inside yourself and those around you and you find your attitude, in other words, what makes you special, you'll discover that passion for who you are and what you do. Great leaders recognize attitude in everyone around them. Great team players realize their unique contribution is one of the reasons their team is so strong. A recent Gallup poll survey concluded that 80% of us are achieving less than we could because we are not enthusiastic about what we do. If we could live our attitude, that passion for who we are and what we do, employee turnover would drop by 70%. Customer loyalty would increase 70% and profits would rise 40%. You know, some of us are really good at math, naturally. Others of us are great communicators. We all have our gifts. Gallup's most recent research discovered that organizations operate as if customers and employees behave rationally. They do not. According to one Gallup expert, people make choices based on emotion, not logic. If you want charged up employees and customers, you must touch their hearts. The bottom line is truly humanity. To be successful in today's world, you must reach people emotionally. Focus on what makes that person special. Understand and appeal to each individual's attitude. My grandfather used to say, life is not a science, it is an art. It is an art. And what do great artists have? They are joyous, they love who they are and what they do. They are creative, they learn from everyone around them, but they live their lives, they run their lives in their own unique way. And thirdly, they are demanding. They will settle for nothing less than the very best from themselves and from those around them. Joyous, creative, demanding. A number of years ago, I had a student teacher named Laurel, who was a rotten student but a brilliant teacher. The first time I saw her in a classroom, I knew why she was on this planet, to teach children. And every now and then, I go to her classroom on the south side of Chicago, and I sit in the back just to watch an artist at work. And the last time I was there, Laura said to her class, children, on Friday afternoons, as you know, when we have a few extra minutes, we'll have an oral quiz. Whoever gets the correct answer may leave a few minutes early and begin the weekend that much sooner. And today we're going to do president's quotations. And the first one is, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And this little boy rocketed out of his seat right in front of her. But Laura looked around and went, Kimberly. And Kimberly stood up and said, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And Laura said, oh, you're so smart, Kimberly. You're such a smart little girl. She puts her arm around her, walks her to the door. Oh, Kimberly, you're so smart. Have a wonderful weekend, you smart little girl. She came back and said, we have time for a few more. How about ask not what your country can do for you. Now this little boy's got both hands up. And Laura looks around and went, Nancy. And Nancy stood up and said, John F. Kennedy. And Laura said, oh, you're so smart too, Nancy. Oh, you're such a smart little girl. She put her arm around Nancy, walked into the door. Have a wonderful weekend, you smart. But as she's going along, this little boy's had enough. He sits down. I wish those females would shut up. And Laura whipped around and said, all right, who said that? He jumped up and said, Bill Clinton, see you on Monday. <laughs> His favorite word was passion. 
He'd often say, do what you love, you'll be known as a smart person. But sometimes life doesn't give you that opportunity. Then you must learn to love what you do, and you'll be known as a wise person. But if you can do neither, if you can't do what you love, or learn to love what you do, then do something else. (laughs) Because life's too short to waste even a moment of it. Passion is the difference between a workaholic who puts all their time into their job and a loveaholic who puts all their creativity, humanity, common sense, and intellect into their career. One of the great things about passion is it opens your mind to the possibilities of everyone around you. That's what leadership's about. That's what life's about. It opens your mind to the possibilities of everyone around you. There's a lot of talk about discrimination today. It's based on one thought process. I've met someone like you before, so I know who you are. When the reality is there's never been anyone like you before, never will be again. Each of us is a a once-in-a-universe happening. But how often do we judge someone by their age, their color, their sex, what they do for a living, the kind of car they drive? Why do we do that? It's easier, that's why. Stick a label.